Today I'm going to do a review on a sheet metal shear that I recently purchased. I think I've had about two or three weeks now. Had a chance to uh, review, so I hadn't seen really many or really any reviews I don't think of this particular shear. It is a Bosch GSC 12V13 and the big feature about this is that it's a cordless metal shear. Now the this is just the box that came in. I mean, this isn't like a, an original unboxing or anything because I've already been making use of it. But this is essentially, I mean, there were some other stuff in here like some instructions and whatnot. But essentially, this is what you get in the box. And the particular one that I ordered did not come with the battery. So, this out of the way. So, this is essentially what it looks like. The battery itself, uh, like I said, it doesn't come with the battery. Uh, I did have a little bit of trouble trying to figure or trying to be certain of, of which battery I needed to get. So this is actually the the particular battery and the charger itself, uh, a BC330. Now you also notice that this battery is a three amp hour battery. They also sell a two amp hour one. Uh, actually, I've got one of each. Uh, the three amp hour has has worked just fine. And of course, this is a 12 volt. Now there is an 18 volt model of this as well. Actually, I didn't see it when I was initially looking. Uh, otherwise, I might have been tempted to buy that. But when it comes right down to it, uh, the 12 volt has worked just fine for for what I for my purposes. And just a few features on here that uh, that I see that I like compared to maybe some of the other less expensive uh, shears that I've seen out there. Let's see if we can get this zoomed in just a little bit better. Uh, one thing you'll notice here is that this is a uh, it's got a four-sided blade on it and you've got a screw and you can actually uh, turn this around to a fresh fresh edge so that if you do dull the uh, you know dull one edge you've got you know more edges that you can use uh, and you've also got a similar type of setup get to where it can be seen a little bit better similar type of setup on the bottom and actually it looks like the the blades are the same now I'm not sure if these uh, these types of blades are any kind of a, uh, a standard uh, carbide type insert like you would see with a uh, with a use on a lathe for example uh, but still the the fact that you can switch these around is nice I mean on some of the cheaper ones generally it's just like uh, a single edge at least uh, at least for the vertical part and you do also have an adjustment screw here for adjusting the gap uh, between the uh, between the two blades and you would want to do that kind of adjustment see if we can get it in a little bit closer not very well but uh, but adjustment screw right there and then you can adjust the gap here and where the gap comes in is important is when you get to uh, a thicker sheet thicker pieces of metal you actually want to widen that gap a little bit uh, I can't remember what the exact rule is but uh, let's say if I was going to cut 16th inch of metal then I would probably want to uh, want to widen that gap a little bit most of the stuff I'm going to be doing is probably going to be anywhere from 016 to 040 and the tests I've done so far it, it's worked just fine with that I will mention that actually where I first saw this demonstrated at and it really wasn't done as a review just as a course of his uh, of what he was trying to demonstrate there's a uh, sheet metal working channel called a uh, Ray Shalen's Pro Shaper which he uh, the focus on his channel is automotive <clears throat> restoration work and of course when I saw him using this he was just you know breezing through uh, pieces of, of, of sheet metal like you know like it was paper so that impressed me enough to to go ahead and spend to go ahead and purchase it now being a Bosch of course uh, I mean I guess you do get you Bosch is recognized for high quality it's actually my first Bosch tool but of course you do pay a correspondingly high price for that and uh, it cost $350 off of Amazon. I did see some that had similar features that uh, uh, were, I guess you could call clones of that for going maybe $100 to $150 less, but I figured I would just go ahead and spend the extra money to, to go ahead and, and purchase a Bosch tool. Uh, the other thing is actually sort of unusual about this is that I did find it on Amazon, but uh, it actually shipped from Korea. And I did some searching around, and from what I can tell, I couldn't really find any places in the U.S. that actually sold this tool. Uh, you could either you know, buy it, have it shipped from Korea, or you could uh, order it from a store in, in Europe, which, so I don't know, I thought that was sort of unusual. I don't know if it's just because of the high price, there just isn't many takers for it in the U.S. or, or what exactly. So I think that's all I'll cover as far as uh, just, just showing it. Of course, the battery slides in easily enough. 
you know, into the back, you know, sort of similar to what I would see with the Milwaukee, but uh, of course I'm sure the shapes are not compatible. Part of what I've got to do today is, is sort of a continuation of what I was doing with bending the test sections, and I had a problem with, the, with one of my measurements for the test section for the aileron. So what I'm going to be work, what I'm going to be uh, working on is I've got some scrap pieces of metal over here from uh, looks like probably my rudder, and I'm going to be trimming those uh, trimming those down into into usable sizes uh, so that I can continue on uh, doing my aileron uh, redoing my aileron test section just to make sure I've got all my calculations right. So what I'll do is uh, I'll get set up here and we'll uh, do a few few tests of uh, cutting metal, not only uh, the 016, I've got an 025, or 025 section, some 032, and I'll do also do a test section on, on 040, which for me, those would be the metal sizes that I would most commonly be using. Okay, one thing I think I neglected to point out is the uh, type of shear. If you'll notice the special sort of curve around to the side here, this is, a, uh, this is what's referred to as a throatless type of shear. So that has the advantage of the metal can, one side of the metal can, can pass over and then the other side of the metal can, can pass under. So that makes it easier to, uh, to do cuts into, into long sheets of metal. Okay, so we'll go ahead and uh, set up on our first piece. I've got a guideline along here to follow. And of course one of the disadvantages, I guess, of having, a, of, uh, having the throatless type of, uh, of cutter is that you are sort of limited on one side. If I tried to do my cut on the other side, obviously uh, the, uh, this part of the uh, of the shear would go away. So, so there is sort of a handedness, just like uh, with uh, with left and right handed uh, hand shears. So I'll go ahead and get this started up and. One side down. And I guess one thing you notice here it does sort of cause a little bit of a, of a ripple effect at least on this uh, sheet metal that it's a, a 1-6. Of course I probably wasn't holding it in the best way. I may have actually been stretching the metal a little bit myself. So we'll go ahead and do the other side now. And get oriented around and we'll see if we have the same stretching problem on this one or not. Okay, so cuts done on this one and actually sort of getting the same stretching effect as well. Uh, of course, all I'd have to do there if I really was if I really was concerned about the ripples, I do have a sheet metal shear, so with it uh, the sort of trim down a little bit, I could draw a line, draw an additional line and cut that down on the shears. So I've got a got some 025 here. We'll go ahead and give a try on and see uh, see how that works. We'll go ahead and try on the 025 now. Uh, it's a little bit thicker. We may not have the uh, the ripple issues that we saw on the other one. So we'll give this a try and see what happens. And I guess one thing I'm not sure I have mixed feelings about as far as uh, using this tool is the fact that there really isn't a press paddle switch for this. It's either on or off. Uh, so I don't know. I sort of have mixed feelings about that. Uh, whether whether I would prefer to have a uh, have a uh, press tile switch or not. So. Okay, so that obviously went through very smoothly. Uh, as far as the edge goes, it looks like it, and it may just be an adjustment on, that I need to make on the blade gap, but it does feel like there's a little bit of a rolled over edge. Uh, we definitely don't have the ripple that we had on the other, had on the 016. So that's good to see. And of course, as you saw, it, it went through that, went through that piece of metal very quickly. So we'll try a piece of 032 now. Now this is actually a piece from uh, an aborted, uh, aborted attempt to 
try and cut out uh, cut out nose ribs using my CNC router, uh, which unfortunately I've never really had much success with. But we'll go ahead and get this uh, get this scrap piece off so that this is a, a little bit a little bit more usable for for other projects. Again, this is this is uh, 032. Try and make sure everything's where it can be seen well. Turn it on. And again, that went through it very nicely. Definitely much, much faster than uh, if I'd have been having to cut it with hen shears. Of course, actually, uh, really, since I do have a have a uh, a, a straight shear or a stomp shear, uh, it would be just as easy and and actually more accurate if I were uh, doing it with a stomp shear. But as far as demonstration purposes goes, it definitely shows it's quite capable. And it also demonstrates, you know, even though, yeah, maybe for this case, a stomp shear would be better. If, say, I had done layout for this part and I wanted to do rough cutout, then obviously I would have no problems uh, doing, a, doing a rough cutout before doing final trimming if, if, uh, if this were uh, just laid out, on, laid out with ink. So we'll move up to the next step, 040. And this is actually just a little scrap piece uh, off the end of the of the main spar which is 040 thickness and we'll give this a little bit we'll give this a try and see what see how well it uh, see what how well it handles it and again does a very nice job uh, the only thing that uh, I would notice here is if for some reason, say I was wanting a thin strip of metal uh, as, a, as, a, as the final product, then obviously this sure would not be a good choice since in the, in the course of, of being deflected down by the, by the throatless shear, it, it obviously puts a bend into it. So yeah, I wouldn't want to be using this shear for, for uh, that particular purpose. But as far as on the other side, obviously a uh, good edge actually maybe a little bit less of a rollover on this one so it's probably that this that uh, maybe the gap on this blade is tuned more towards uh, towards an 040 uh, piece of uh, uh, 040 thickness one other limitation I noticed uh, with cutting the 040 that might not make it suitable for use in all circumstances uh, of course it made the uh, of course made this curve but actually it looks like it probably introduced some I'm guessing some probably some stretch into the metal. So, for example, uh, if I had thoughts of maybe using this shear for, uh, say, cutting another main spar web, uh, then I probably have some have a little bit of a little bit of floppiness in here, which might not. Uh, uh, well, I personally would not find it desirable as far as for the for the uh, main spar web. So that may be another another situation where there's where there's a limitation of as far as using this uh, type of shear. So this is all I'll cover as far as the shear at this point. Uh, it's probably not going to be the do-all tool for for all sheet metal cutting tasks, as demonstrated by some of the stretching that was uh, seen in the in the 016 and also in the 040 metal uh, sheet metal. But uh, you know, still, I think there there will be plenty of cases uh, for for either rough trimming, maybe breaking down larger scrap pieces where this will where this will come in handy. So, if you've got any questions, uh, feel free to ask.